and progress to be saved, apparently. Mm hmm. Can't believe we were the baddies. Oh no. So, Lena was one of the Archangels then? Yes, the uh, Progenitor Archangel specifically. Hmm. Ah. Neat. Then the glitch turned her into an NPC, and then she's like, well, I have to defeat the Archangels because that's the quest. And, uh, yeah, that, that didn't go great for her, did it? Yeah, whoops. She killed her kids. <clears throat> oh dear. Nope. My pupae. Mm hmm. What, like the lava form of an insect? <laughs> yeah, that's how archangels work, you know? Okay, alright. Yeah, they're like fuzzy bees. Fuzzy bugs. Little, bu little bug ears. Little bug boys. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. and uh, Glitch City are really easy to find, as I'm sure, I'm sure you can tell. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hang on a minute, where's my axe? So is this like Dungeon 9, essentially? This is the, this is a city that got glitched out. Yeah, so this is an overworld area, it's just... Have this very normal one right now. Hmm, okay. I love it when I'm having a normal one. Yeah, you can talk to the NPCs. They move real quick, so it's hard to actually get them long enough to actually say anything, but you can talk to them. I see. And they have so much to say. Oh, yeah. Words. So many words. They also talk pretty fast, so it's a little hard to understand what they're saying, but they're energetic. Can't fault them for that. Mm-hmm. See the enemies have survived the fair bit of glitch. Mm -hmm. This is not they like Axiom Verge in that regard. You're just trying to like, you know, get along, do your thing, and all of a sudden somebody somebody replaces all your textures and uh, loads the wrong sprite data. It's just just a pain in the butt, really. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Don't you hate it when that happens? I do hate it when that happens. It's so annoying. And then you can't find your number, so it's missing. Just all right. Uh, trying it. I try not to like say stuff like this as much as I used to, because I used to say stuff like this constantly, and I want to be a better person. But I'm going to hunt you down and kill you in real life. <laughs> okay. Right now. <laughs> okay. I I think you should stay at home and reserve that for later. But otherwise, okay. It's true. You should you should at least wait until after COVID. Hey. It's never gonna end. We're in the first year of quarantine now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it makes you feel better, I'm likely not moving anywhere. <laughs> okay, well. You'll have a long time to cash in I, that furnace. Yeah, I, I have a, that, that vendetta can sit on the back burner. <laughs> Growing nice and like ready. You should wait. Yeah, you know, it, it, it blossoms. I'm gonna just sequence break this quest. Literally, go through the wall and just be like, Oh, come on, I know there's a way to do this. You can do it, I believe in you. Yes, I did it! Good job, oh we're so proud of you. <laughs> Thanks for finding our sister. Uh, yeah, sure did. Anyway, uh, I need this potion for trading quest reasons. I could actually go find the person, but I don't need to right now. Give me this tunic. I want to wear it and then be like, wow, I'm never wearing this again. This... Oh, defense tunic. Yeah, I'm never wearing this again. I have a speed tunic. Just as yeah. well side, this game seems like it would be more greatly it would be greatly appreciated more by people who know about like all the glitches in old uh, Game Boy games and stuff more than 
just a random audience expecting a platformer. I I know about like uh, you know the um, uh, Link's Awakening speedrun. It's cool. <laughs> right, and I, but I feel like if somebody goes in this game expecting like a just a clone of another Zelda game or something, this would be alienating. Maybe a little off putting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might but, have missed that there, but I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's just that this clearly is like a love letter to like. Yeah, counterpoint. Thing. Screw that hypothetical person. They suck. <laughs> yeah, what you might have missed there is that that shot basically lets you take a tunic and then mm -hmm. basically dye it with a potion you have mm -hmm. to give it a new effect. That All makes right. too much sense. But okay, I'll take it. All right, where's the cave? All right, so we do actually want to complete their side quest. I just wanted to prove that you don't have to if you want that stuff. Oh, right, right. You can just, you can just like, go to the other version of the shop that, that loads later in the game. Yep. Because <laughs> they're both on the same map. Yeah, exactly. That's this is, like, how in um, uh, one of my favorite, like, uh, glitches in um, uh, Majora's Mask that some speedrunners use is, and this is for, like, most of the 100 percenters, is, uh... Well, first of all, like the um, uh, the warping without ever activating an owl statue is, of course, the most broken part. But mm -hmm. close to that is how you can bomb hover out of a great fairy fountain into another great fairy fountain because they're all on the same map. It only just loads the graphics for the one you're in, but they're all there with loading zones and collision and everything. So that means you so can I, enter one and exit another just by bombing. Which means two you can like. Air. I think the um, the way uh, I think the way the um, uh, my one the um, uh, let's play I watched did it was he entered at Snowhead Temple and left at uh, at um uh, what's the beach area's name? <laughs> Great Bay. Uh, Great Bay, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just authenticating as Tressa for a second. Let's see. Totally normal, not identity fraud. Not in the slightest. Oh yeah. I mean, it's her fault for having very basic uh, security questions. Yeah, I mean, she really should have thought of that more. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, I think she's just in here. Yeah, we just go in the first dungeon. Tress will run up and be like, "Hey, I'll go to the place, and now we can go to the proper version of that." Neat. And we get an item that does nothing. I love items that do nothing. Those are my favorite kind of items. Alright, so now at this point, uh... We also got a glider at the shop a little while ago. Okay, gliders cannot go over pits. That does not make any sense, but okay. They should be able to. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. But, uh... Oh, right, wrong buttons. There we go. Okay, cool. I don't actually need to do any of this. I could just wrong warp my way to the other side, but... Eh. Give me the money. I have to go get another useless item with it. I don't actually need it for, like, financial reasons. Oh, but I do want to equip the glasses again for something here. The chairman's a real ledger! Oh no! Now I gotta... kind of casually bike my way around because I did legitimately get myself locked in there. Although... A lot of red ink. Alright. So, I don't think I have the guild IOU. I don't. Okay. So how you do this is you deposit enough. Uh, I want to deposit all my money, just like most of it. Okay, there's got to be a nice balance here. That'll work. And then I need to try to exceed the withdrawal limit of $1,000. 
guild bank would be a risk of insolvency. Oh no! We get a guild IOU. You better believe that does nothing. Alright, we're done in the guild now. We could go into yep. the chairman's room and get a whole bunch of little money bags, but money is irrelevant to us now, which is exactly how I like it. <laughs> Alright, uh... I'm gonna upgrade a whole bunch of things or get a different sword, but I like the sword I have. <clears throat> Black silk tunic and fizzy brown potion. If it looks like I have no idea what I'm doing, you are correct. But now we have the hover tunic, so we can just kind of fly around instead of needing to jump anywhere. That's the best Weirdly, way. It looks like you were guiding us through something, and I feel deceived now. No I know. So I'll do that. Okay. Look at oh, the thirsty like person. Yes, people. that's where I need to go. Oh wait, you can just you can just helicopter around now. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, the runny cool. blue potion right. is a water potion, so you can give that to the thirsty person, it'll give us a red paper. You take that to an office, and it'll be like, oh yeah. So we're getting that training quest knocked out right now. Okay. Fish-shaped pen, we take that up to Creepy Jack. Sounds like the worst Would the water potion ever. just be a uh, bottle of water? <laughs> Yes, yeah. but it's a potion. Okay, fair right. enough. So now we have an illegitimate house deed, so we can take that down to the bank and do very reputable things with it. The better question be, is why is a bottle of water not a water potion itself? It's not in a beaker. I legit do not have a response to that. <laughs> All right, we got the... It, it's, uh, it's the beaker, it makes the difference. <laughs> We've got a briefcase, okay. the traveling merchant will want that. He will give us uh, his shirt. You know, as one does. As you do. Like you do. Uh, I don't really want anything you're selling. It all looks terrible. Poor traveling merchant. But hey, now he has a briefcase. But yes, we are trying to meet him as many times as possible to complete another point of the side quest, but meanwhile, we've got his shirt. Let's go find that naked bear so the bear can no longer be naked. Alright. Here's a shirt. Here's the bear claw. The bear claw, you can go visit the zoologist. So like, oh man, I love bears. Like, cool, have a bear claw. In exchange, we get the binoculars. These do something. You can actually use the binoculars to uh, spy on your neighbors. Kinda. It basically lets you view one screen ahead in the direction you point it. Huh. Which Interesting. is actually mildly useful. Alright, and then we go to the traveling merchant one more time. And this will be the last of the uh, items that does nothing that I want to get. Nope. There we go, I did it. Got the Book of Changes. It effectively does nothing, but I can show you what you can do with it. It'll tell your fortune, sort of. Sort of. So it effectively does nothing. Okay. That's cool. Like, does it give you a hint as to where to go next when you really don't need any more hints? Because no. you just go in wherever you have gone? It, it is legitimately just a fortune telling thing. That oh, has... so, so it's... So it's like a... Um, uh, so it's like reading your horoscope. In the exactly. Newspaper. It is exactly like that. It is... It's literally just uh, the... Um, uh, what is it? The, um, uh, the NES Tarot card reader game. Where it would literally just uh, give you a randomly generated fortune and that was it. <laughs> Basically. Dang. Coffee and deadly premonition. Except that, except the first one of those is actually a premonition, I guess. Alright, I could <laughs> mess around with the tunics, but I don't need to. Right coffee. now, I want to go over here. Warp. 
I'm basically looking for any more of the secrets that I need to find, which I don't need to at this point. I have everything I think I need. Where is the way to get through this wall? Oh, there isn't a way. All right, then. Yep. How about this wall? Nope, no walls. All walls are denied you. I think you've gotten all the fancy items from secrets. Uh, I know there's at least two that I'm still missing. I don't know where they are, though. And I also don't really care that much. They might be in dungeons. Good policy. Yeah. They might be in dungeons. They might be dungeons. Didn't want to run warp quite that hard. Just a little, little less hard. Too late. You already won't run warp that hard. It's not coming back from it. Well, at least I get some hearts out of it. That's okay. I can still get up to where I need to. There's a finesse to that. You gotta time your how long you hold down the lens for. Okay, we're at the palace. That's what we are here for. I hope you truly understand the power of compassion. I don't. Nope. No clue. What we do understand is the power of incredible violence. Alright. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one tends to work. It gets results. <laughs> no diving? Can't tell me what to do. Alright, we're in Funker Dome Palace now. This is one of the very few places that is not procedurally generated. This is an entire dungeon with puzzles built around the use of the missing glasses. I appreciate that. But at the same time, I feel like that almost um, shoots the um, uh, concept of the game in the foot. Because it's like, oh, we want to make sure you have a good time in the final dungeon. So we did the one thing we were avoiding doing the whole game. <laughs> I realize that's not a nice way to say it, but it's, but I, I'm I get just, what you're going for, though. I'm just kind of over procedural generation at this point. <laughs> I mean, whenever you can literally break a break which, where you're going, they do have to have some way to uh, make sure that you have to interact with the dungeon. Yeah. So this particular dungeon, just, just to clarify, this is the not procedurally generated. This Correct. is the one that is not procedurally generated. All those blue the only tiles around. Not procedurally generated. Yeah. Um, I think the advantage of that, though, you know, it is weird to 180, is that it is this like the final dungeon? Yes. 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 So that, I mean, making the final dungeon be that does maybe give a sense of finality to things at least. I suppose. <laughs> um, Maybe not the greatest solution for it, but also, I don't know. If, any, if anything's going to be not procedurally generated, it would be like an impactful point in the right. game. I do think they could have had their cake and eat it too if they'd managed to get more set pieces in the regular dungeons, where it wasn't just, here is a room with monsters and some blocks you can destroy. If they had mm -hmm. some dungeon rooms where it was like, here's a puzzle that uses the item you have in the dungeon. Just to give them a little more life and not just be like, oh yeah, uh... You gotta use the bombs to break out of the room in this one because the wall has rocks in front of it. The Starkey take could also be they save the non procedural dungeon for last to show you how bad procedural dungeons are. Because procedural dungeons are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, harsh, but fair. <laughs> oh boy, a fire tunic. Yep, you wear it if you want to light yourself on fire. Alright, uh, I see. So, uh, all these blue tiles all around that I am meticulously avoiding, those tiles, if you step on them, will warp you back to the Dale. And that's even if you step onto them using the missing glasses. And you'll notice they're all placed very much around the edge of the screen, and that's to control where you're able to safely wrong warp to. Uh. Unrelated to everything, I just have to share this with you because uh, I just I, I was looking at my phone and I suddenly remembered that this happened. Uh, I got texted, totally unprompted, I've never given this person my number, from a realtor uh, saying that they wanted to help me uh, liquidate my house. <laughs> 
And I assume you responded with a hell no or a no response whatsoever. Uh, actually, I'm gonna let him along for a little bit. <laughs> oh, do tell. Then I then I said, give me two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they never texted back. <laughs> ha! I was good. I was eyeballed more. Either that or go to new phone, who dis? <laughs> uh, that's the proper way to do it. Alright, so... Yeah, our ultimate goal in this dungeon is this space over here. We have to legitimately walk over there so we can go, go down, get the key, and open the door that is blocking us from getting up there. We have to get the keys behind the door that we need to unlock. I can't believe yep. you would desecrate those graves, and when the skeleton inside the grave is rightfully, hey, jerk, you kill them. Like, are you sure you're the good guy? Because I'm unconvinced. I think the game's established you're very much not, not the good person. Okay, yeah, yeah but like, you're, you This is you an were... anti-hero's journey. Oh, yeah, good point, you're right. Alright, what's up over here? Oh, this is supposed to be the redemption arc, so the skeleton murdering is a little bit, um... It's true, it, it, it needs some, yeah. uh, polish on this. From now on, I will try to avoid murdering all the skeletons whenever possible. I have loads of hearts, I can afford to do that. Let's see. And yeah, you can't double jump back into the walls in here. Didn't hurt to try, though. So, one thing I'm confused about is, um, is this co-op or just it can naturally be. a companion? It can be co-op if you plug in a second controller. Yeah. Okay. And Paige is just an AI there. Yeah, Paige uh... is, uh, she's just our... Uh, gal pal. Okay. Gals being pals. Mm hmm. Wait a second. Okay, I don't have the room to wrong work there. Yeah, this is very tricky to get your head properly wrapped around. It's very easy to. Wait a second. No. Paige, I'm gonna have to ask you to stop. <coughs> but there is one corner of here that we need to get to. And it's gonna have a couple enemies we have to take down from drastically different angles of this place. Wait a minute. So in other words, you have no idea where you're going. I have no idea where I'm going. I am trying my best and it's not working. Oh wait, mm, wait, I do wait. like, I go. do like that um, uh, you've awakened as um, uh, the Godhead essentially, right? And are now like walking around like on the um, on void void tiles. Are basically, basically mm -hmm. just totally um, ignoring the rules of reality. And Paige is like, well, I mean, I'm still following you though, so here I go. <laughs> <laughs> she is doing the best she can with what she's got. She's She's she she tries the hardest, and she's not about to let, to let that stop. Let um uh, your sudden ascension, your sudden violent ascension, stop her. All right, there we go. We've got all the doors opened. Now we just need to get to uh, over there. And how do we do that? I'll get back to you on that one. This is like um uh, this is like when Jesus uh, walked on water at, during the storm, and Thomas was like. Well, I mean, I'm one of your disciples, so I guess I'll just do it too. <laughs> and everybody gave him shit for falling in, but he got out of the boat. <laughs> he made it a few steps. It's more than they did. He, he had the guts. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, uh, he had guts. All right. And and buoyancy, and buoyancy for a little bit. Bro, he literally walked on water. He wasn't just, oh, look, I'm swimming. No, he was walking. I mean, oh. fall asleep in Sunday school? <laughs> he had really good feet. <laughs> okay, let's... Oh, you are in my way. Stop it. Okay, so now okay, I need to get... I'll... Yep. I got tossed in jail because I wasn't pro enough. Okay, I think maybe I, I kind of understand where I'm probably supposed to go, I think. 
I do like the little chameleon like monks. Oh yeah, like, they're, uh, they're great. Creating, oh, like I'm using their chameleon powers that chameleons don't actually have. Uh, they don't change. They change colors for reasons unrelated to camouflage. Mm -hmm. They don't care about hiding. They just like changing colors. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you could, wouldn't you? I would absolutely change colors. I'd be walking around just like flashing between like blue and green all day. Everybody being like, "Come on, Beat, turn that off. It's annoying." And I'd be like, "Hey, no." I can't believe Beat would be a walking epilepsy warning. I would carry a big like sandwich board sign saying, "Please look away if you have photosensitive epilepsy." Mm -hmm. Alright. Am I supposed but to be here you yourself with, like, a boombox or something? Uh... Just to add, like, the auditory overload as well. I mean, yeah. Just walking around blasting, like, Killboy Powerhead off of, uh, Offspring's album Smash. 1992 represents... Or was it 93? I'm looking this up now. I think it was 92. You could also, um... You could make yourself the blue guy from that music video. 1994? Wow, I was way off. You're talking about, um, uh, the music video for Hit That, yes? Yeah. Yes. I have listened to all of the Offspring albums this week because it was a very difficult week at work, and I had the living room to myself, so I put it on the big TV. I see. Fair enough. Uh... Oh, wait, wait, that's how you do Rise it. Rise and Fall Raging Glace is incredibly underrated. Like, that one's... That's really not how you do it. That one's really good. I believe in you, Clear. You got this. This is I'll figure definitely... it out one day. Yeah, this is definitely kind of dungeon. Is this gonna have you not one hundred percent sure of what it is you're supposed to be doing? I'm just gonna kind of. I mean, is best it... I can see is that you're wrong, wrong warping and. This, I mean, it's a wrong warping these puzzle. Exactly, and that can get really, really tricky. Uh, it's, it's kind of like like the more complicated uh, portal challenges in a way, the spatial mind thing. thing. Exactly, and I have pretty good space. Okay, no, yes, I know where this is. I am on the right track officially now. I believe you. I don't actually believe him. Oh yes. no. Okay, so our goal for now is to get down to that little ladder area, which we can do. I know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. Are you truly? I do, for real this time. I truly do. But because I accidentally left the dungeon, now all those guys have respawned, so... Uh... Oh my god, it was me. Just this little skeleton guy sitting at his computer trying to get work done. Yeah? Getting distracted very easily. Like me. <laughs> get distracted by wandering adventures a lot. I get distracted by literally everything, man. <laughs> so I guess technically that's a yes. Yes, yes it is. Yeah, I can absolutely understand that. My mom has ADHD and she's recently had a stroke, which that's oh. been a lot of fun for both of us to deal with. And oh wow, that is that is extremely serious. I, I'm so oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's been a while, but yeah, it's been an ordeal for everyone here, and sorry to just casually drop that on you guys like that, though. No, dude, you are allowed to, like, talk about things that worry you. I'm, I'm not sure if a recording for a Let's Play is the best time for that, because this will be seen by people, but, dude, like, we care about you, and, like, we are more than happy to listen. <laughs> We're your friends. <laughs> Thank you for that. I was just gonna say, though, like, we definitely have that kind of problem. We'll be trying to get her to do something, focus on something, and like, she'll just be like, did you guys get the mail today? And like, I know she doesn't mean anything like by it, but even so, it's just like, we need you to focus, please. Mm. Yeah. It's just... And she's doing her best, we're all doing our best, but just how that sort of thing is. Hey, it's, it's hard, man. Yeah. I love that, like, you can use this thing to, like, distort space, but you can't, like, just sort of climb over the couch. <laughs> oh, no. The couch is very fixed in space and time. You it's can't like, about that. It's like, it's like, Paige is like going, okay, so, like, you know, my, my human brain can only barely comprehend what you're doing. It's, it's not easy for me, but it's a couch. 
You can just like climb over it. It's like three feet high at max. Oh, yeah. my, <laughs> my glasses don't let me see that reality. <laughs> One that I think um I'm just reminded of that suitcase from Discworld. Uh that just follow it's it's just a magic suitcase that follows the main character around. And like he's literally going into like dimensions inside his mind, like getting having like dream sequences, and it's like, wait, what's that suitcase doing there? Oh, he just follows me, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the it's, luggage. It's, stuff just happens, it's fine, don't worry about it. Yeah, right. he, the suitcase just like, yeah. We've done it, we did it, we are now actually where we need to be. One more wrong warp, and we're up here. One more, we've got the key, we unlock okay, these doors, we finally did it. We're now facing the final guards of the chairman, and then we'll be at the boss fight against the chairman. He hires a lot of skeletons, but he himself is not a skeleton, so I will not feel the least bit bad about striking him down with a tungsten sword. Oh, I appreciate that. But you do feel bad about striking down the skeleton. Like, yeah. yeah, I feel very bad about the skeletons, but you know, I appreciate that you're not killing him because he's a skeleton. <laughs> Jump over here and I'll give you like, you want to save before proceeding? Yes. This is a good idea because this fight can take a little while. 